everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I have just finished Cornelius and the rest of this video is going to be showing you how I did it. I think he turned out just amazing. This is a chicken from Lori Holtz chicken salad quilt. I really, really like this. It just turned out absolutely adorable. And I find with each chicken, it's getting a little bit easier to digitize them and put them together. And if you're new to my channel, the process I'm using to make all of these chickens is I took the Simple Shapes from Lori Holtz, Simple Shapes Chickens, and scanned those into the Scan and Cut and created that file in the Scan and Cut and then uploaded that to the Brother Canvas and then downloaded that into an, a software application called Simply Applique. And Simply Applique creates the embroidery file for Applique. So if you have an embroidery machine or your sewing machine has the ability to be a combo, you haven't tried it yet, I really encourage you to uh, get it out and start to play with it. Start watching these videos. And Hattie was the very first chicken and I went really, really slow, step by step on that one. And we'll walk you through the whole thing, baby steps. So this was really a lot of fun and this stretches your stitching muscles and gets you working them for sure to really put that embroidery machine to work for you. All right, so the rest of this video is gonna be how I did Cornelius and his little chick that's following around behind him. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not already. And we've got a lot of fun stuff in the works. Don't forget, March 21st, we're going to start the Designs by Juju Blessings Table Runner. Absolutely beautiful table runner. And I will put a link below to the gorgeous fabric kit for that if you would like to use the fabric kit and have yours turn out just like mine. All right, so let's get started putting together Cornelius. Today I'm going to digitize the Cornelius Rooster from the Chicken Salad Sew Along by Lori Holt. I've already scanned all of the chicken simple shapes into the Brother Scan and Cut and have uploaded those to the Brother Canvas workspace. Now I'm going to put Cornelius together. The pieces that we need for Cornelius are M1, 4, 12, 13, 14, 25, and then we need pieces 23 and 24 in reverse for the chick. I am going to come here to my projects on this tab. If you are not sure what I'm doing or you're new to this, please check out the video up above right here on digitizing Hattie and how I went about this and that will give you a really good idea. I go very slow step by step and walk you baby steps through this whole process. Okay, so I need to get to piece 25 in order to get his body first. And I'm going to scroll down here and find 25. And here he is. When we hover over this, we get an edit button or a download. And right now I just want to edit. I click on that one time. That's going to bring up a brand new mat and put the body on there for M25. Now I need to bring in the other pieces to get him all set up. So I'm going to click here in this menu bar. We have my projects. And when I hover over these, I can see the numbers that I titled the piece and they are sequentially numbered on the mat as well. So I need to scroll down so I can find pieces number one and four. And I know I did those together and I think they're on this one, yes. So I'm just gonna click on this one time and drag it over onto the mat. And I'm gonna take the body first. I'm just gonna move him over here off the mat for now. Again, I numbered these sequentially. So you can see here in the little tool tip, it says M1 through four. So that's one, two, three, four. This is 13, 21, and 36. So I know that this is M1. 
I know that this is M4 and I don't need these, so I'm gonna drag my cursor over all of them and just hit delete on the keyboard. Now I need piece 12. And if you're not sure what that looks like, you can refer back to the sewing guide. I have a link to the free sewing guide below. That sewing guide is exactly like a pattern and you can get an idea of what it looks like by looking on page seven and eight, and that will give you an example of the simple shapes so you can kind of see what they look like. And I'm gonna scroll up here until I can find what I think it is that I'm looking for. I think it's this one. There it is, yep. So this is six, 11, and 12. Let me grab this and drag it over. I know I need piece 12. I also need 13. Is that on this one? No, I did not do them in any kind of order, so I don't need these. I'm going to highlight those and hit delete. Now I need 13 and 14. Okay, I think that's all that I need besides the chick. I'm not going to mess with the chick in here because I have already downloaded the chick and cut, out, cut them all out already. Now all I need to do is put Cornelius together. So let's take a look at the picture of Cornelius that is on page 12 in the sewing guide. I need the body. What I'm going to do right now is just set these up so that we can cut out all the fabrics. Pieces one and four, I'm gonna cut out of the same fabric. So that's a solid red that I'm using for all of the chickens. So I'm gonna put his body right about here. I'm gonna grab these two and I'm gonna bring them over. And then I need to do his feet as well. And I think I can get those on this page. And to digitize the feet, to be able to cut out the feet, I'm going to grab this little quarter inch box right here that I had over here called Beak's Feet. I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna do a little bit of editing on here real quick before we get going. I need a total of eight of these in order to make the feet and two of them to make the beak. So I'm just going to right click and duplicate and get myself 10 of them. His feet look like they are pretty much identical. So I'm just going to kind of put these together and then I will just make a copy. I need to get a little bit bigger. I'm gonna come up here to the magnification percentage and increase it just a little bit. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take my cursor and highlight over all of these, making sure that the joins all match in the middle right in there. I don't have anything sticking out, making any kind of funny angles and all of the edges are blended together. I'm going to right click on them and weld. And that makes one foot. I think that's fine to do it like that. So I'm just gonna right click and Duplicate. That will make life really easy for me to figure out how Percy needs to go. Okay, we've got all these pieces ready to go now. I'm going to put all of these over here, I will have a strip of fabric right over here that will be big enough to cut out everything in yellow that I need. Okay, that looks pretty good. That will economize the fabric and that'll work out just fine like that. Okay, so I am ready to download this now to the Brother Scan and Cut. I'm gonna hit download. Look at this, the project can't be downloaded. Some shapes extend beyond the cutting area at close. So if I go back to 25%, I've got all these other pieces out here and it won't let me download them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these back on the mat. It does not matter where they go because I'm gonna fiddle with those again in a minute. So I will delete all of these once I get this design pulled up into 
the scan and cut. So now I'm going to hit download and scan and cut transfer. Scan and cut transfer is ready. Let's go over to the scan and cut and make that first cut. I'm getting ready to cut out a couple of pieces of Cornelius and I wanted to show you how I take care of my mats. I always leave that plastic, even if it doesn't stick, I always try to keep the plastic on it just to keep dust and, and dog fur off of it. And oh, I've got a piece of tape, a couple of pieces of tape on here from a previous cut. Y'all, if you go to the Dollar General, they make this stuff called Totally Awesome. It's a cleanser and they have all different kinds of it. But this liquid is amazing when it comes to cleaning your mat. And I like to use that in like a Cottonelle wipe. But I use Costco's Kirkland brand of, of Cottonelle wipes. Bottom wipes, we'd call them, right? Baby wipes for grown-ups. And I like them because they don't have any oil. You get a ton of these packages in a box at Costco, but any Cottonelle will work. It's the right size, but they don't have oil and they don't have alcohol in them and they don't leave any fibers on the mat, which is really nice. So I usually will just squirt this stuff right on there. And then when your blade cuts on the mat, it, it leaves little cuts in the, in, on the mat itself. It always does. And you really can't see it, but what happens is, is you get little tiny fibers from the fabric even though I've got heat and bond on the back, you get little fibers down in those cuts. And so if, when you take the wipe and you use this totally awesome, I usually scrub it both directions and you don't have to scrub super hard, but I scrub it in both directions in a quadrant. Each quadrant is different. And that stuff is just so good at taking off all of the gook that could be See this? Can you see the gook that's on the wipe, the red and all that? I couldn't see that before. But I try to do this before every cut. It works really well. It takes it's just a couple minutes to dry. I don't rinse it. I get another one. And then your mat sticks real nice. Real clean, looks great. I gotta show y'all, I did one on the gold fabric mat. I have a fabric mat that is just a disaster. And let me show you. So this mat here, I did half to show a friend of mine. Look at what the Totally Awesome did with this half that's near my hand. And I didn't do the other half. Look, how, look at the difference in how clean that mat is. So this half, not sticky, was done with just the wipe. And this half, look at that, was done with Totally Awesome and the wipe. I'm telling you, this stuff is great, y'all. That's better. This is the low-tack mat, so it's not going to grab. And I've got black marks on my white paint. Oh, I need to put my fabric on my mat. I have all my pieces backed with heat and bond. And... I'm going to put them approximately where I think I remembered where I put everything. I'm going to put the feet right here. I'm not going to use tape this time because I just cleaned the mat. It should be all right. On the scan and cut, on the SDX, they have a arrow on the mat that tells you which way it goes in. On the CM series, the older series with the clear cover, it has an arrow at both sides and you could put in either end. But on the SDX series, there's only one way to put in the mat. So I'm going to make sure it's flush over here with this corner and hold it flush to it. And I'm just going to hit the load button, which is that middle button in this series of three buttons right here. A lot of you ask me what kind of scan and cut do I have. I have an older model. I've had this one since 2019. It is the SDX225. They no longer make this. This one was replaced with the SDX225F, as in fabric. The difference with that one is it's basically the exact same machine that I have, but the F means it came with a fabric blade. The gold blade, that's this one right here. 
with the gold cap on it. That's the fabric blade. And when you're doing this, you can cut with either the gold blade or the black blade. So that one, the SDX225F, came with a gold blade and the gold fabric mat. They're phasing that one out as well. So now they are selling the SDX325. That has everything this does plus more accessories. So with each incremental increase of the number of model, you're getting more and more scan and cut. So don't feel like you can only use the model that I have because they don't make that anymore. Although it's still great, I don't care. I was using my CM650 the other day and it worked out fine. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. So the last design I sent down wirelessly was that big mishmash of Cornelius the chicken. And on the screen you have pattern, and this is patterns that are inside the machine when you bought it. You have scan, and this is the button you would push if you were gonna scan in your chickens that we had traced that's just to do an initial scan, okay? So try not to get confused with this scan and the scan that we do when we want to take a picture of the fabric on the mat so we can know everything is placed in the right spot. So I do want to get my pattern from the cloud. And since this pattern right here is patterns that are in the machine when I bought it, I'm gonna go to retrieve data. And retrieve data allows you to get your data from either inside the machine, the cloud, a USB, or you can cable it to your computer. So I'm going to hit cloud, and it's going to pull down the last design that I sent down. There's that whole mishmash of stuff, but this is everything that I need in order to cut out Cornelius right now. And I want to show you something real cool that we're going to do without having to go back and forth to the computer. So recall, I, I need to delete these. The reason they're here is because it would not allow me to download the chicken with them being off the mat. Well, I don't have room on the mat for all of them. So I'm just gonna touch and I'm gonna highlight one with a red box, I don't care which one. And I'm gonna go to edit and there's the trash can and I'm gonna get rid of that and tell it okay. And I'm gonna touch here again trash can okay and touch and trash can and okay so now i'm left with the pieces that i want to cut in this pass and so i'm just going to tell it okay now i want to scan the mat and that's what i was saying don't get confused with scan that's like an initial scan of a design we want to take a picture of the mat so i'm going to hit the scan button right here. It's a picture of your mat with a blue bar. So I'm going to touch it and I'm going to tell it start. And it's going to take a picture of the fabric. Y'all ignore all my mess behind my machine. I'm in chaos here because I'm putting up a new long arm. Okay, let me zoom back in for you. So this is the beauty of the scan and cut. I can see that I need to move this piece right here and I'm gonna put it right over there. I know that's gonna cut right just like that. These are actually fine. I'm gonna to touch them and I wanna edit and I'm just gonna use this arrow button right here. I wanna nudge it. I think if I move it with my pen, it'll probably uh, be too much. See, now that's too much. These things, incremental, you guys, very small stuff. And let me touch the chicken so I can see we can get bigger by touching the magnifying glass. This thing, I wanna scroll up just a little bit here, closer to the top of the fabric, like right there. I'll touch the down arrow here, there we go. We'll press this down arrow. I wanna make sure that everything on that yellow fabric is going to cut out correctly. And it looks like it will, and I'm glad I brought up the Cornelius' body because he is absolutely 100% on the fabric now. So I'm gonna say okay, and okay, and okay. What I'm doing is I'm backing out of all of these menus, and I'm gonna click okay one more time, and now we're gonna get into the cut. And I'm gonna put cut, and start. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope not taping down this fabric is not gonna be a bad thing. You just, sometimes as your mats age, they require a little bit more help when in the sticky department. And if your cut 
gets pulled up at all, you can stop the machine, lay everything back down where it needs to go, tape the fabric to the mat, and start it again. Don't remove your fabric from the mat. This is doing just fine. Perfect. Very good. All right, I need my little spatula. Let me pull all this up. Ah, perfect. That's good. And when you pull, when you lift these off the mat, just kind of scrape them with the spatula. You don't want to pull the fabric because you don't want it to stretch. Y'all, I love this thing. Oh my gosh, this is the greatest. Oh, I found a piece of tape. Greatest thing in the world. My poor hands, they just can't handle it anymore. So the scan and cut is such a blessing. A lot of you ask me if you can also cut your quilt blocks. Yes, you can. You can cut quilt blocks. You do waste a little bit more fabric, and that's where you would want to use that gold fabric mat without anything on the back. Look at these feet. Oh, perfect. The gold fabric mat is designed to be used without a substrate on the back. You could certainly do that, and then if you're froggy enough, there is a video out there. I think her, she's Apple Lover, she'll show you how to draw your quarter inch seam line on the inside of your quilt blocks. Uh, you would run it through again, do another pass, and change to the pen instead of the blade, and it will draw your quarter inch seam lines. How about that, huh? All right, so we've got this all done. There's those pieces, and I'm going to tell it okay. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go back to home, okay, because I need to cut out those other ones. So let's, let me show you what that's going to look like. I need to get those other pieces back so that I can get those cut out. First I'm going to hit eject because I need to put that other fabric on the mat and get that all ready for cutting. I'm going to load the machine with the mat again. Now I'm going to go to home one more time. I'm just going to hit the home button. It says OK to delete all patterns. I'm going to tell it OK. Now I want to retrieve data again. Remember, when you go to get data from the cloud, it's going to bring down the last one that you sent. So I'm going to go to the cloud, and that was all of Cornelius's pieces. But right now, I want to keep the ones that I got rid of before and get rid of the ones that I already cut. So I'm going to go into edit where I can find my trash can again. And it automatically selected the beak. I'm going to trash and OK. And you can do a select all. So if I was to take this and drag it down here, OK, and these three buttons right here are select all. So I'm going to touch that. And it wants to know, do you want part of the mat or all of the mat? Well, I want part of the mat. And I want everything below here. I'm going to tell it OK. And it selected all of that. Let me move this guy. Well, oh, it did select the chicken. Look at that. So now I'm going to tell it OK. And I'm going to hit the trash can and tell it OK. Now we have left everything else. I don't, I'm not sure what's what. Let's see. I think this is the tail, and that one goes up here for that fabric I have on the mat. This is the wing, and that goes down here. And then this is his neck feathers, and I put that fabric right here. Okay. That's cool. That was easy. I'm sure everything's super sticky on my mat. I think it's going to work out great. So I'm going to tell it OK. And OK. Please select. We're going to cut. And start. So see, I used the same pattern twice. I cut what I needed out of the first pass. And now I'm cutting what I need out of the second pass. Now remember, when you put heat and bond on your fabrics, you want them to look glassy on the back, just like this. I iron my fabric to my heat and bond, I cut it out, and then I 
put it on the upside down and then I iron it again and I hold it for a good five, ten seconds on each piece. And that's how I'm getting these really clean cuts. I'm using the low tack mat with heat and bond on the back, fabric side up. All right. If you are using the purple mat or the gold mat, you want to use paper side up. Oh, that's really cute. That's adorable. I love it. That's going to look great. There's his little wing. Okay. And there's his tail. Okay. We are all finished with the scan and cut. This was great. What a good time. This was a lot of fun.